Hi guys, it's uh, Jackie M from Masters of Malaysian Cuisine with Malaysian Ingredients Made Easy and in this particular video, we are talking about curry powders specifically Malaysian curry powders Now if you grew up the way I did, growing up Malaysian you just know them as curry powder, you don't think Malaysian curry powder and that carried me through to my adulthood living in Australia so for the longest time when I was publishing recipes I never thought to specify Malaysian curry powder and it really came home to me a couple years ago when my own daughter finally decided to attempt to cook something based on one of my published recipes and she came back and complained oh the curry doesn't taste like how you used to do it and I dug a little bit further and I realized she was using a curry powder that was not Malaysian so that was the reason and also I heard some anecdotal uh, kind of like feedback from other people as well about how their attempts at my Malaysian curries that they tried at my restaurant didn't really work out because they couldn't maybe they couldn't get a hold of Malaysian curry powders or they didn't know to look for it okay so next time you go shopping make sure you check the label on the back this says made in Malaysia now the second point I want to make about Malaysian curry powders is that Malaysian uh, manufacturers like to pass their curry powders not just curry powder and that's it okay they like to have a uh, fish curry powder meat curry powder rundown spice mix all kinds of stuff so now the question is, is a lot of people uh, do ask me uh, does the fish curry powder contain any seafood because they're allergic to seafood or uh, does the meat curry powder contain any meat because they're actually vegetarian that sort of stuff guys no none of these contain any meat or, or seafood okay they're just uh, different blends of spices and their description just basically refer to uh, the kind of flavors they work best with okay so if you've tried a fish curry in Malaysia and you want to replicate it go and get a fish curry powder but uh, can you actually mix and match them can you use a fish curry powder and a meat curry uh, meat dish and uh, use a meat curry powder in a vegetable dish and all that yes of course you can actually I, I don't mean to say of course because it may not be immediately obvious but uh, I did used to do that at my restaurant I used to make a very popular Malaysian lamb curry and the trick was I actually used to use a fish curry powder as the base for it okay so give that a shot next time you um, decided to experiment with cooking curries uh, try a few different flavors and see what you manage to come up with okay now I'm going to go through a list of uh, seven different ways to use Malaysian curry powders some of them are from yours truly and some are courtesy of my chefs at Masters of Malaysian Cuisine so make sure you stick around to find out what they are first of all uh, like I said before to make Malaysian curries uh, we're talking about rendang we're talking about the famous Malaysian chicken and potato curry we're talking about fish head curry we're talking about sayur lode which is a vegetable uh, you know with coconut milk we're talking about kurma curry all those sort of stuff um, Malaysian curry powders are your answer to producing beautiful Malaysian curries now uh, number two we're talking about curry laksa if you grew up in my part of Malaysia which is about 40 miles south of Kuala Lumpur your experience of laksa is curry laksa which is the laksa that tastes a little bit curryish it's got coconut milk and it's rich and creamy and the way you make it is by adding Malaysian curry powder to your laksa spice mix it's not the only thing you add in it okay you do still want the other rumpa or spices but um, what I do is I would add some dried shrimp as well blachan all these kinds of beautiful herbs and spices but it's the Malaysian curry powder that will really kind of knock it out of the park okay if you want the recipe for my laksa my curry laksa make sure you sign up in the link at the end of this video and I'll send it out to you ayam goreng which is a fried chicken um, specifically Malaysian style Malay style fried chicken that's another dish I used to sell at my restaurant I used to make a ayam goreng uh, with chicken wings and the Malaysian curry powder again was one of the key ingredients that go into the marinade okay mi goreng Goreng literally in Malay means fried noodles but we Malaysians when we hear the word mi goreng we think of the mama mi goreng the Indian mama style mi goreng that's got tomato and turmeric curry leaves and garlic and onion and curry spices in it okay now there are lots of different types of mee goreng recipes out there sometimes they taste you know quite dry sometimes they taste like glorified like spaghetti bolognese to me in all honesty and really I think like if your <laughs> mee goreng attempt seems to be 
or it's the other end of the spectrum where it tastes really tomatoey, make sure you use a healthy dose of curry powder in it to really um, make it more uh, the way it should taste, okay? More kind of like spicy and with a complex mix of flavors as opposed to just straight out tomatoey and sweet. Instant noodles, and I know this sounds really basic, instant noodles as in two minute noodles, but if you're Malaysian, then uh, you almost certainly will have spent a good chunk of your life living on or snacking on two minute noodles. And the way I used to do it, courtesy of my brother, because we grew up in a big family, lots of us kids, and we were having to take care of ourselves for a lot of the time. So what he taught me, the secret to kind of like turning a bland bowl of instant noodles into something that's really delicious and memorable is by adding a spoonful of Malaysian curry powder into your soup broth um, and just mix it through make sure it's well dissolved and then whip it up add an egg in it if you want you know the egg will actually help to blend the flavors bind the flavors to the noodles and voila you've got a really blinked up uh, instant noodle bowl as a steak rum, and this is something that I actually developed as part of a campaign to promote um, Australian Christmas with a Malaysian touch, which was to actually add Malaysian curry powder to your steak rub or to your roast lamb before it goes into the oven. And um, you mix it in with other spices like garlic and um, seasoning and pepper and it will produce a beautiful um, Malaysian enhanced uh, steak when you throw it on the barbecue, okay? And finally, in a curry sandwich. So if you are used to eating sandwiches with just egg and salad, the way to really kind of make the flavors pop is by adding some curry powder to your spread, whether it's just mayonnaise or to butter, and then using it on your sandwich and give it a shot. Let me know how it turns out. All right, guys, so these are just some simple suggestions on how to use Malaysian curry powders. I've got lots more ideas and recipes as well, but if you want to get a hold of them, make sure you sign up via the link on the next screen, and I'll see you in my next video.